Sometimes the Spire gives you a really tough one, and there's no shame in losing. Uh, particularly if you if you made a an unusual starting choice, and, and that is one of the reasons to stay away from boss swaps. It start, starts like that, I tend to think. All right, we can maybe get the Burning Elite for free here. That looks pretty good. Wow, this is a much more loaded Act 1. This is the kind of Act 1 I want to see as Ironclad. Here we go. Now, Cultist First doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to... Uh... I'm going to stand by the Bloodletting Picks, by the way. It doesn't mean that we're going to encounter a fight in the event, and indeed we don't. Seems I owe the chat a dad joke. Bloodletting makes me think of letters. Which makes me think of this old one. Remember, no matter how hard you push the envelope, it will always be stationary. Let's transform a strike into a power throw. And a slime goo. There we go, we got a one hit point burning elite, no problem. No need to fear the cultist. Kind of tempting to go a uh, prismatic shard here, isn't it? However, I already have a power through, and there's an evolve here. So, I'm going to buy the evolve. Not usually a card I jump on here. Do I ad additionally pick a wild strike up? Not... When I could remove a card. No, that's ridiculous. Actually, not much harm in going uh, as small as possible from this point, because the whole downside to a uh, small deck is that you're vulnerable to status adds. But if you're not vulnerable to status adds, then no problem. Feel No Pain comes back. Welcome back, Feel No Pain. I actually like Warcry with Evolve, too, oddly enough. Do some fun things with that. But I'm going to grab the Field of Pain first. And this Burning Elite has but a single hit point. Which means that all I need to do is draw some damage. And we're back to full health. We have a Toy Ornithopter. And a Headbutt, Hemokinesis, or Uppercut. Hmm. All of them are good, actually. Is Bandage Up ever good enough? I think Bandage Up can be nice on Silent. Maybe on Defect sometimes, but it's hard to hard to make it worthwhile for uh, the, the money that it costs. Osiris92, thanks for 10 months of support. The very generous Tier 3 sub. Heck yeah. Let's see. Kimo Kanemo is pretty nice. Although not a card I want to play a lot of times. I think we take an upgrade this uppercut. I think that'll be pretty good, actually. And we're definitely on track to fight two more elites. If we get the sentries, it's a completely free fight with these powers. Gremlin Knob will be a little trickier, but we do have an upgraded uppercut in a moment. And that'll help quite a bit. And we have an attack potion, too. Yeah, we should be fine to keep going this way. Our hope is that this is sentries, and then we get another leg of Ula next. But we'll see. It's from the knob. And that's okay. Greetings, Sir Knob. Please enjoy being bashed in the face. Uh, I think we want to use the attack potion now so that we can redraw it. Let's see what we get here. Uppercut, wild strike, or boomerang. This would be the time to use a wild strike, actually. Let's just go double uppercut. We go bash, uppercut, presumably strike. Yeah. Take 18 here. I guess defending does technically block. Pretty much guaranteed to draw a kill next turn. Okay, not too bad. Get more healing in the form of Blood Vial. We've got healing, healings, and healing so far in the Relic Bar. 
Double tap is kind of nice with uppercut. A little awkward otherwise. Sentinel or Inflame are kind of mediocre too. Could this be a bite stack? Maybe. And Flame seems kind of weak as well. Hmm, how am I planning to scale damage? I'm not sure yet. Sentries, come on. Dang it. One time? Please one time. It's wake up time, egg boy. Behold my wrath. Yeah, really happy with this bloodletting so far. Beautiful. So we always draw uppercut strike next turn. How much damage is that uh, with minus two strength? We do 11, which goes to 16. 16 plus four, which goes to six, which is exactly 22. I can play this defense. Beautiful. Very easy fight. We're rewarded with a mob bang. God dang it. A colorless potion, and uh, maybe another evolve, a sentinel or a rampage. May break if used. May end up just choosing not to buy anything at the store. We don't have that much money, so we'll see what's being offered here. Is rampage good here? Rampage would give us a way to kill the guardian. But I think the bloodletting already does that by letting us just play the uppercut and the bash. You saw what we did to Legavula, and I think we're already killing the Guardian. And I, I think that there are a lot of other cards that we can add that will do something similar to what the Rampage does, like a, up, dub, a uh, drop kick or a body slam that would just end up being better. So although we could use that Rampage, I don't think it's particularly useful. Oh, we are offered Fire Breathing? Okay. Okay, let's do it. I'll break the mall bank for that. I'll do that. I wish I could buy Deep Breath, genuinely. More Battle Trance here. What about Shockwave? Now we got an Uppercut Plus. I don't need this Shockwave. Or this Carnage. The Fools. They have no idea what's happening. Zeknar, thanks for the 90 person raid. Welcome, welcome. You're here in time for our third attempt at Ironclad today. Let us speak not at the previous attempt. Um, and you've just joined us in time for Act 1, where I managed to make these the first five cards into the Ironclad deck. So we're doing Evolve, Fire Breathing, Power Throw. Let's go. Yeah, shortest lived Maw Bank ever. 12 gold Maw Bank. Poor thing. You poor thing. I could just kill, or I can do fire breathing power throw. I probably just want to kill you. I think the evolve down is important, though. Happy birthday to Merle! Now there's a birthday stream. Hope you guys had an awesome time with the co op. Fire breathing do anything immediately for the deck? Yes, because of the wounds from the power throw. Yes, it does. The toast. The birthday toast. I think Headbutt's also really good with Fire Breathing Evolve, because you can put wounds back on top. And they become the best card in the deck, actually. Since they just immediately dry dies nah, immediately draw stuff. The double birthday. It's a lot of birthday wishes in chat. Simply beautiful. All right, well, let's upgrade that fire breathing. And let's upgrade that um, 
Feel no pain? Or maybe the bloodletting. Since we have so much card draw, let's upgrade the bloodletting. Make it properly like three energy. And then our goal is to play both the Evolve and the Fire Breathing and then populate the deck with status cards. Currently, we can only do that with the Power Throw, but uh, the longer the run goes on, the more ways we'll find to do that. Bloodletting proving its worth there on that turn, giving me the ability to actually transform Guardian in addition to uh, getting our power down. Or in, in addition to blocking, rather. Look at him go. Could bloodletting for more damage here, but no need. The power. The sheer power. It is deeply satisfying. Profoundly so. Hmm. By def... Bend, headbutt, strike to kill. I'll take three damage, whereas if I played two defends, I'll take two damage. And we get to kill with fire breathing, which is more fun. Huzzah! Get toasted, nerd. GG. Exhum. There's nothing to exhum, though. Hmm. Preemptive exhum? Otherwise, I guess this is a skip. I don't really need any of this. Have the runs been trading us today? No victories so far. But uh, we've had some really fun uh, ironclad decks. Our previous attempt was uh, Peace Pipe Juggernaut with an Iron Wave that was working out okay until Collector stopped it. And then there was the Gremlin Incident. Brutality for the Runic Cube. Thing is, with the Fire Breathing stuff, uh, rather with the Evolve stuff, we're already drawing to a 10-card hand a lot of the time. So we're trading one health away for nothing sometimes with a card like Brutality. I don't really want to do that. I'm going to take the Exhum. It doesn't actually do anything for us right now, but I have, I have reasonable hope that it will. Dome versus Black Blood. I actually do like the Black Blood quite a bit for its heal 12 per fight. Feels a bit redundant with Toy Ornithopter Blood Vial, though. Like, that's a lot of healing. I don't need that much healing. I suppose Dome is fine, because I'm playing the power through either whether the enemies are attacking me or not in order to deploy the power synergy. So extra energy via Dome is not too bad at all. Let's do that. Let's take a Runic Dome. Got lots of energy generation via the Bloodletting already, but I think a little bit more will help. And I do want to continue to look at stores, because I think they're quite good. Elites are not too worrisome at the moment. I actually think the, the Fire Breathing thing will work really well against um, both the Book of Stabbing and the Triple Slavers. It's a gremlin leader that would be my most troublesome foe. Chosen's also pretty fun. She might attack us here on turn two. She might not. This is definitely not the draw I wanted, though. This might be a gambler's brew. Otherwise, we're in a bit of trouble. I guess I could headbutt the power through. Let's do that. I'm just going to bash. We might take 12 here, and if we do, that's okay. We don't. So then we can uppercut power through here. We draw the evolve and the field of pain next turn, and everything will be fine. Do I need to play this defend? I'd rather not. Good. 
All right. Shame about the drawer there, but we should be fine now. Perfectly block that. And then the toastening occurs. GG chosen. A second upgraded fire breathing being offered to us at the first card reward of Act 2. This is meant to be. This is meant to be. Let's do it. As they say, you gotta. How could I say no? How could I say no? What a turn one from the Shelled Parasite. It's actually not that bad, though. I think I just play them? Sure. I only take one damage here. Perfect. No headbutts, unfortunately. We'll take some damage here. I guess that's fine. We have so much healing. Not much point in using a potion when we're not... Uh, if we're... Below... If we're not below full health, rather. If we're not injured, no point using the potion because it heals us. But now that we are injured, there's maybe a use for it. Nexuma Cinder's Bane for actual block here. We're being attacked for either 9 or 5 by 2. So we're not taking that much damage. But we might find a potion, so I'll use the Cuddler's Potion. Secret technique for power through. Headbutting. There we go. Twenty damage per wound is pretty spicy. Twin Strike Plus does pretty decent damage to a target of our choosing. We might want to consider that just so that we can get through stuff like minions. Clash is pretty useless with all the statuses. Mr. Bacon News says, with the last fight, the last event being a shrine, is the first question mark guaranteed to be a fight? It can still be a shop or chest. So it's not always uh, always a fight. Does the deck take a wild strike? We would actually consider it. I would much prefer a reckless charge, but a wild strike would be decent here. Yes, it's the statuses that make Clash useless. I mean, like, usually, yes. Usually. I am going to take this. I'm going to take it. I think we need a little bit of targeted damage here. Just a bit. Not a lot. Just a bit. Sneko never attack if on turn one. Every other turn, though? Oh, yeah. They attack every turn. Every single one, without fail. And I drew absolute bupkis, unfortunately. Um, Which is... Fine? It's gonna have to be. Put the bash on top. Hmm. Here we go. the fire breathing, because if I draw the wounds, then we'll, we'll just kill out, right? More or less. Dang it. Excuse you. Put the wound on top. Can't kill. So block five, take a hit this turn, unfortunately. Thankfully a small one, and then win. Not too bad. We do now have two potions. We're being offered a second feel no pain, or a combust. Yet another power for area damage. I don't think we want combust and fire breathings. That seems excessive. But I will take a second copy of feel no pain. Oh yeah. And we're going to look readily for anything that says exhaust on it. Feed is pretty spicy when we have Exhum, although I think Feed Fire Breathing is a little difficult to make work. Exhuming Bandage Up is almost just as good, actually. It'll be even more healing per fight. Some pretty good relics on sale. I particularly like the boot thingy for turn one block. 
how does this deck deal with Woke Bloke? Uh, my hope is we find a second wind. And our answer is power through second wind cycling. But I don't know for sure. It's my intended path from here. Can only fight two elites, right? I think we do this. That looks pretty reasonable. Could even go to another shop later, too. But thingy's pretty nice for fighting elites in Act 2. Not thrilled by these cards. Go boat thingy. Boat thingy it is. And potion later. Shell out a little bit more here to look at some better potions, potentially. Can't drink them here for health, alas. Um, is Blessing of the Forge better? No. Flex and Gambler's is good, unfortunately. Okay. No improvement, but we got to look at some more potions at least. As for an upgrade, what do we choose? Probably want to upgrade the power through, genuinely. So we get a bit more upfront block from that. Upgrading one of the Feel No Pains for a bit more block per is also decent, but I think plus five block on this is important to get for now. Hopefully this is... Yeah, not uh, not the Gremlin Leader is what I was going to say. Three wounds to my deck per, per turn? Sure, go for it. Knock yourself out, sir. We'll take some damage in this fight, but not too much. Thinking we probably want to Gambler's Brew maybe next turn? This is where Unceasing Top would be good. Do we pick Second Wind? Oh yeah, we pick Second Wind uh, with, with Extreme Prejudice. I don't know if that, uh, if the Lady in Blue counts as, like, card rewards or not. I'm trying to determine whether I gamble four with the Evolve or not. These defends do seem nice, but we want to get deeper down. Okay, let's, let's gamble four this turn. Yes, perfect. Perfect. Headbutt, um, I can't headbutt the wounds. We headbutt the power through. And then I think this turn I use the flex potion to uppercut wind strike. 13 plus 20 wouldn't be enough. Not quite. We're actually only one short of a kill. Sad. Have you ever played Crown Trick? Yes, I played um, a few runs of Crown Trick through the, the campaign on base difficulty. And uh, I found it uh, enjoyable. It's uh, an intriguing take on the the rogue light, like more, more original rogue inspired with lots of interesting items and effects, but uh, suffers a bit from being a translated game and from having some, some really out there conditional effect design like you deal damage to enemies that are diagonally but not orthogonally adjacent to you whenever you play your 10th skill it's really tricky to keep track of but can be rather fun So with Vulnerable, Twin Strike will be 10 times 2. 13 plus 10 times 2 is not 34. We're one short. But the Flex Potion makes it a kill. We'll block 20. We don't need all the powers in play, just some of them. This turn we take some damage. That's all right. We'll start drawing the wounds soon. Satisfying. Magic Flower is here, which says healing is 50% more effective during combat. Blood Vial now heals for 3. Burning Blood now heals for 9. The Toy Ornithopter now heals for 8. And this Inflame says plus on it, which is nice, but I'm going to take Shrug it off instead. I'm a little bit worried about the next Elite fight. Maybe we don't do the next Elite fight. 
without any potions. Could be pretty bad. I'm upgrade the shrug too. Oh, and wing boots. Okay. Can teleport around. Yeah, the Book of Stabbing adds wounds. My main concern with the next elite fight is Gremlin Leader. An enemy that only attacks infrequently for huge amounts of damage, which makes the Runic Dome bad, and uh, that frequently summons Gremlins, against whom we'll struggle to deal area damage, unless I get a perfect draw of, like, power through... Fire Breathing turn one into Headbutt Shrug turn two. So I think what we should do is just avoid elite fights for the rest of this act. Because our, our deck has a, a, a really powerful setup. It, it just needs a little bit of time to get going. And I don't want to gamble the whole thing on one potentially really disastrous fight. When I don't have to. Centurion could attack me here. Both of these are three block. Boy, drawing that. Oh, actually, Mystic could have attacked me there, too? No, she couldn't have. She could not have done that. We want to headbutt the... Ooh. Power through, I guess. Okay, Centurion will attack this turn. Mystic will not. Mystic will either buff or attack this turn. Centurion might attack. They could both be attacking, and that'd be really bad, because I have no block this turn. It'd be very sad. Please don't hurt me. Ow. Ow! Dang it, they both attacked. Well, good thing I have Magic Flower. And Battle Trance. Let's get some more card draw in here. Where... On what would I uh, what would I bottle tornado here? I would bottle the evolve. Then we could add things that add statuses to the draw pile, like uh, wild strike, and feel pretty good about it. Did I not use my wing boots charges. Okay, this shouldn't be too bad of a uh, of a fight potentially, as long as our draw order is half decent. This down. Oh boy. Might not be decent though. Too many powers. At least we're going to do 20 to all with the uh, Senders Bane. That's a good sign. They all attack for 11 this turn. Didn't play the other Feel No Pain. You need to die next turn. Please draw a wound. Oh, bummer. We're so screwed. Terrifying. Simply terrifying. It's pretty bad. But a, a, probably a good highlight of why I was avoiding gremlins so hard. Burning pack looking good here. Exhaust card and draw cards. Especially with two Feel No Pain. Seeing Red Plus also nice, but we don't have the initial card draw to make the uh, Seeing Red good. And I will risk one more fight here. We do heal three, and this is a great fight. Assuming I can draw decently. Looks like we're there. Jeez. Am I just dead? Looks like I'm just dead. Yeah, that's why I don't like to build this deck all that often. Um, wonder what we could have incorporated that would have changed our fates a bit much. Hmm. Actually, wait, we have so much feel no pain. Hold on, hold on. I'm I may be proclaiming things a little bit prematurely here. 
but I do need this heal. Yeah. Okay, we lived that turn at least. Whew. Flame Barrier Runic Dome? I don't know, man. Seems like we do need a couple other upfront blocks. We're not finding what we need, is the thing. Chomp seems so comparatively weak. We should be able to beat Champ, no problem, actually. This is not worth it. Yeah, another power through would have helped a lot, or anything that can put the statuses in the draw pile. But like I said, we're, I think, okay against the Champ here. Thanks to his uh, semi-predictable AI and giving us time to get set up here. Just gonna zoom up front. So, let's take a look at the champ AI real quick. I do have um, Beast Cherry Mod installed so that we can do that. Champ has two different phases with a whole bunch of different things he can do. In phase one, these first four are the options. Heavy Slash, Face Slap, Defensive Stance... Actually, no. Um... And Kolo. He can do it random. Although on A20, he'll always defensive stance before gloating. So it's randomly heavy slash, face slap, or defensive stance. One of three options. Um, and then taunt is every four turns, not a randomly used move. So there are three possibilities for what champ does turn one. He either blocks, or he attacks for 18 or 14. Either way, we're blocking mostly enough here. Goes for 18. Good. Our goal is to get the powers down and the statuses in play and all that, and to exhaust the nonsense cards. Here's the block. This turn again, either at 18... You also can't do the same thing twice in a row, so this turn there's only two possibilities. 18 or 14. Goes for 14. And this is turn four, which means the champ will never attack us. Always opting for his taunt move. Do your worst. Well, our worst just so happens to involve... ...putting a lot of wounds into my deck. So I hope you are okay with that, sir. Block here? Let's just block this turn. Don't want to lower his health too much prematurely. Now is the time. Call that a weapon? Call that your doom, sir. Headbutt the wound, then draw the wound, the power. GG, sir. We've made it out of Act 2 successfully, and I like this barricade quite a lot. Barricade Runic Dome is one of my favorite combos, because then you don't have to guess whether you're blocking or not, or what you know, whether you, need, you, whether you need to block or not. Still missing the huge amount of block generating cards that are really going to go with this, but I'm hoping we can find them soon. And of course, we're offered Choker, Cursed Key, and Crown. This is actually a very reasonable Velvet Choker deck. Um, but we'd probably be better off with the Crown of the Key. Let's take the Key here. Curses do work with Fire Breathing, right? I think there's enough use for the uh, for six or more cards per turn that I don't want to take Velvet Choker. So we have Wing Boots too. It also means we can just remove a curse here if we need to. 
We've got wing boots, meaning we can jump around and fight extra elites if we so choose. I think what we want to do right now is just look at card rewards. Those are more important than anything. Turn one barricade, easy peasy. Let's go. I'll retain 23 block. Just watch me. Want to headbutt a wound? No, I just want to headbutt the power through for the moment. Toasty. Very toasty. Alright, we could take an anger, but we're really just looking for the status synergies, like I said. Please, more of those and less of the other stuff. That'd be great. Okay, we're not going to play barricade here. Let's get this fire breathing. Already got one down. Yeah, let's get this fire breathing. Since we need to block more on that turn. Flame barrier, yes. Evolve, yes. Exhume for block, yes. And strike. Get him, fire breathing. It's your time to shine. Hey. Good work. Finally, a card that can exhaust stuff. True Grit. It's not exactly the best, but it will suffice. I think we're going this way to start. We do want to consider the boots. What's the ideal path here? Oh, uh, we can use the boots at the very end for elite, elite, elite. That's pretty juicy. Noted. Okay. Good. Good. To hear that. Definitely gonna look at colorless cards. There are many that could be really good, like Purity. Deep Breath is intriguing. Dark Shackles is quite excellent. There's Purity. Exhaust up to three cards in our hand. I think I might want that. Hand of Greed's also kind of intriguing. Let's take Purity. Shackles and either Deep Breath or Violence. Not that many attacks in the deck. Take deep breath. Can shuffle the discard pile into the draw pile. That can help get my statuses into the draw pile where they need to go. Seems quite valuable to me. So I'll get rid of that for now. If only I had barricade in play. And if only I knew whether we were being attacked for the big number or the small number. Guess it doesn't matter here. It was the big number. Seems I could be attacked again this turn. I should mostly be sad. Alright, I want that barricade though, so let's see what we can do here. There it is. Mind. They seem to mind. They won't give me any quarter. Ball Famos, thanks for 24 months in the Prime Sub. Two years and still going strong. It's wild. There we go.
What can I say? When it works, it works. Take a wild strike. I think I need to. It feels weird. <laughs> I don't know if that's the right play, but we're doing it, Twitch Chat. Of course, then I draw it before any of the cards that it goes with, so it's going to be bad. I'll try it anyway, but I bet this is going to hurt me and not help me. Yep, there it is. That's why you don't take wild strike. Classic. Oh boy. We're in such trouble here. Here we go. Deck needs a dark embrace, maybe. I guess the, the evolve is kind of our draw engine, but it, it just doesn't do anything quick enough. It's a bit awkward. I should play Killer Pain first. Fine, I'm skipping the barricade here. <laughs> there we go. It's just too slow. Goodness, we have such good healing. Hmm. This should be a fun fight. Against the Repto Daggers. Seems like a good time to Gambler's Brew. Need the powers in play mostly. Perfect. Give you back the burning pact or what? Yeah, the burning pact. So next turn, both these bottom daggers will attack me for 25. They do nine damage and add a wound, which is currently helpful. And then on the following turn, that's when things get spicy. All right, deep breath, save me. Hmm, that's kind of like saving me. Prevent 25 damage there. We'll still take a ton, unfortunately, because the Reptomancer will also be attacking here. But it's better than nothing. Ouch. That should be the only time we get a, a big hit this fight, though, but it did cost me all my health, so I guess that's all it needed to be, really. Works really well once we get to this point, but we just take so much damage getting to this point. I don't know if we can pull it off. Toxic Egg is here to help with a Shrug Plus. I'll take another Shrug Plus, especially now that we have Barricade. I don't know, though. I don't know, though. Idiocracy, if I made a pun based on our latest relic, would it leave you exasperated? I would hope so. Keep sleeping here. And we will take our Sapphire Key. Parasite's not the best. So what would make this deck faster? More card draw would help. More attack options. I guess Body Slam is pretty okay. And removing the basic stuff. I guess the Strike Remove is decent. Better to remove Strike than Parasite for a number of reasons. Body Slam is definitely tempting.
But yes, the, the amount of draws it takes to, to get everything set up in the first place that is uh, currently deeply problematic for the deck. I don't think this body slam is actually helping upon review. Block pot's okay. Do I dare fight Reptomancer again? We're gonna need more relics, right? Hmm. Buy a potion. Potion's definitely helpful for getting through the short term. Let's take a, uh, a block pot then. Hope we can keep healing. This thing is a nightmare with Runic Dome. Good luck to us. I even want to keep these cards? Maybe not these ones. This enemy will change its attack intent every time it takes damage. Unblocked attack damage, specifically. We can work around that. Maybe. But also, maybe we can't. And it will murder me. There's really just no way to know. That's the spooky part. There's just no way to know what it's doing, what it's not doing, what it could be doing. It's all a mystery. It might give us a curse, but maybe that'd be a good thing too. really hope here. Not a lot of strategy. I'm just kind of ignoring what this enemy's mechanic usually does. And praying instead. More statuses. Alright, we managed to avoid getting cursed. That's probably good. Elite number one shall be, well, elite number two, rather, shall be the nemesis. To play all the important stuff. Please don't super murder me. Nemesis. Let's exhaust all three of these. Let's do it. Barricade. Apparently Barricade's not happening. Alright, well, we're gonna headbutt the... Bloodletting, then. So I can actually play the Barricade next turn. Hopefully the Shrug draws something meaningful. Hopefully we're not getting attacked. Oh, I can Wild Strike and then Shrug. That seems wise. Of course, then we draw this, and it doesn't seem wise at all. So I guess this would be a good time to either distilled or block pot. Just block potion. Add 12 to our block, heal 8. Hopefully we're still in the clear here. Yeah. And that way we get to keep the potion if it wasn't even necessary. Which is nice. We also get to keep the healing, which is extra nice, too. Now we're talking. We got a potion back, too. Okay, so we, we managed to get a heal 8 out of that block pot, which is just fine by me. That went really well. We've got a good potion for Repto, so let's risk it for the biscuit here. Go for another elite. Hopefully it's not Repto. It's Giant Head. And I think Giant Head's pretty easy for us because we have a couple of turns to set up here. Just gonna get rid of all this. Anything I want to exhume here? Not really. These cards are good. I 
There's one more fire breathing in the draw pile, but everything important's been played, so let's use the deep breath now. So starting on this turn, Giant Head will attack for quite a bit of damage every turn. A number that will only escalate as the combat proceeds. Yet, this shall not stop us. So we can weaken the head for a lot less damage. And get some pretty important stuff in play here. And we can keep getting rid of the cards we don't want. There goes Bloodletting. Alright, see you later, Bloodletting. It was nice knowing you. It's a lot of giant head health to get through, though. That part's a bit spooky. Oh, and we can also get our Bloodletting back if we wish to. Let's do Purity instead. Forty-one. We're getting plenty of block here. Why are you still here? It put the wound shrug into it. The damage. It's all coming together now. Okay, a bit more energy from Nunchaku. Juggernaut is... Damage? It's another power to play, though. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't love it. I think we risk it with one more elite here. Yeah, bird's already yikes. Uh, Juggernaut definitely makes it more yikes. Alright, no second Reptomancer, thankfully. Said, I don't know how this fight is gonna go. Should have headbutted the shrug before I did that. Yeah. Not too bad. Thank goodness for Barry. Barry Cade. we get Nemesis again? We fought Giant Head in between is how. You might have missed it. It's a slow but steady fight. We managed to prevail. All's well and all that. Alright, Nemesis vanquished. There's the mummified hand. Someone was asking. Whenever you play a power card, a random card in your hand costs zero that turn, and a second upgraded burning pact might actually be enough to uh, to transform how quickly this deck can get its stuff going. That's pretty huge. I think I'll keep the attack potion. Actually being able to kill a minion early in the Awaken 1 fight might be really important. And the heal aid's nice too. I'm willing to buy a new potion in Act 4. We do have to recall. And we go into the Awaken 1 fight. This will be a bit tricky. We've got a lot of powers we just more or less need to play. Okay, J Barricade Turn 1 is actually pretty hype. Shackles you, Flame Barrier, Defend, Defend. 
Next turn's a bit spicy. Probably where we use the potion. Oh, they went for the multi-hit when I used Dark Shackles. That was pure luck. But it's going to help out immensely here. Pure luck. Alright, make this one vulnerable. We'll die to Fire Breathing, maybe. Let's draw now. No such luck. Kill you then. Actually, feel the pain first. Yeah, then shru Actually, I gotta play power through it, so... You live for one more turn. Oh god. No accumulated block? That's terrifying. I think I'm gonna skip on one of the fire breathings for now. Maybe make this uh, fight a little bit simpler. Yeah, let's do this fight with only one fire breathing. This is going to be a multi-attack turn, so we can actually exhume the Dark Shackles here. Let's do it. And now the goal is going to be use the Burning Packs to thin out the deck to just the stuff we want. And use the... Let's get rid of this. Use the uppercut to keep the Awakened one weak. This is going okay. And then this is another multi-hit turn. Good turn for Flame Barrier. Nice. Not too bad. Keep all that block, too. Excellent. Caw! Deck is almost entirely wounds at this point, and I like it that way. You know, that was a lot less difficult of a fight than I thought. If that went so well, then what about Donu and Dekka? Are they going to fare any better? I really doubt it. Best of luck to them. <laughs> the fools. Alright, there might be the matter of some awkward early turns. Not looking to use any potions here, if I can avoid it. But uh, damage definitely going to happen. At least initially here. Okay, and Barricade is here too. Barricade kind of needs to get played, so we're a little dependent on the Mummy Hand here. Fortunately, it hits the worst card, so we take a bit more. Eight more. And then we should be okay from here, at least one hopes. Okay, that looks like it went alright. Gonna headbutt Burning Pact. Shrug it. There we go. 
Now we're talking. Give me those days. Give them to me. Kind of in the money here now. Yeah, it's for once for once Deca's actually on our side, helping us out here. Free block, free damage? Thank you, Deca. Thank you for your hard service to this ironclad run. GG. Get toasted, my friends. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room is this, the heart of the spire, the source of all these additional status cards. All right, we're going to mostly heal. I mean, we heal three from blood vial. I think we're fine to upgrade. Blo barricade upgrades huge. And I think because we have barricade, the feel no pain upgrades are also a pretty big deal. So is this true grit. Let's make this cheaper, though. We, we really need to make sure Barricade can be played. Especially if I draw it on the turn that the heart um, also draws the void. Interesting shop here. All the skills are upgraded, making Ghostly Armor kind of appealing, Warcry kind of appealing. Actually, Warcry is amazing in Evolved Fire Breathing deck, specifically. Elixir could be good. If only we could afford Pocket Watch. That would have been incredible here. Definitely a little bit worried about Spire Spear and Spire Shield next floor. Our current potions will help a bit, a bit, help a little bit against that, but not a huge amount. We could do War Cry, remove a strike. One less strike would definitely help. Make sure we see the, the important cards early. But I think Toolbox is also okay. Let's go with the Strike and Warcry line. I think that Warcry can be really, really useful. Putting a status card back on top of the deck can do all sorts of fun stuff for us. Oh, we got Evolve Turn 1! Yes! This just went really, really well in our favor here. Turn 1 Warcry is... Uh, turn 1 Barricade and Evolve in this fight is huge. Huge, huge, huge. Huge. Uh, I think I barricade Twin Strike, Battle Trance, then actually Battle Trance first. Warcry afterwards. Oh, and Fire Breathing and Exhume, too. Oh my. Exhume has nothing to exhume, though. But I can put a card on top, and putting Bloodletting on top seems actually kind of important. So let's do that. Could also exhume and put uh, Twin Strike on top, though I don't know why I would do that. Let's just play that. We might take some damage on turn one. Even if we do, it's fine because we have so much healing. We do. Take 12. And then we draw a lot of cards. We look for more stuff to get in play here. Do I want to deep breath? Not yet, I don't. I'll destroy one of these burns for the moment. Here is the double field of pains. Perfect. And exhume. Amazing. So we can go dark shackles, bloodletting, exhume the dark shackles, and shut down this multi hit so that we get to keep all the block here. Amazing. Really lucky draw there. So we get to keep 48 block here. Um, let's headbutt. Deep breath. Get rid of all of that. Spire shield attacks us for 38 on this turn. Spear may or may not do anything. Let's get two more burns directly on top where they belong. Thank you for putting them there. This seems wise. Take three more, just secure this fight really completely and totally. Good. 
Try to win the fight with the Nunchaku on nine here. Get a letter opener for a little bit of extra damage. And these cards. No potion dropped. Thought about maybe using the attack potion. Glad we didn't. Can always just use it for 8 health in the uh, heart fight. Alright, I think we're in pretty good shape for the heart fight here. Uh, it's going to depend partially on the power draw order. But I really like what we've got. And this looks like a pretty good turn 1. Although it stresses me out a little bit to get rid of Flame Barrier. Maybe just get rid of Battle Trance turn one. I'd also be reasonably okay using the Attack Potion and targeting that with the Burning Pact here. Let's do that. Let's see what our options are. Yeah, these are all mediocre, so let's take and just destroy something. Excellent. Double feel no pain early is good. Got bloodletting here, so we can draw into our powers if we want to. Okay, nothing special here. I'm gonna use purity to get rid of some of the basic stuff. Uh, defend, twin strike, defend. Real shame we don't get to keep the block. I don't think it's worth using to steal the chaos to try to hit barricade. I think that's too unreliable. No evolve turn one is a shame, but there's still plenty of time for this to change. There's, there's Evolve. Okay, and we only drew one status early. That's good. That's good. And there's Barricade. Now would be a good time to use the Distilled Chaos, I think. Although we're kind of likely to hit statuses. Um, we want to make sure we survive the next couple of turns, so... Let's see what we get here. Choose a card to return to my hand. I'll take Purity. True Grit destroys the Purity. <laughs> I mean, it made block for me, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Thanks? I need to live this turn, which is going to be pretty iffy, looks like. Hopefully I get six feel no pain block. We're going real low on health here, Twitch chat. Good luck to us. Um, I think Deep Breath is a bad idea. Yeah, because we haven't got the power through yet. Okay. Ouch. Alright, Barricade has to save me from here or else. Okay, headbutt that. Use War Cry to put the wound on top. Power through. I think true good here. Fine. Oh, I can't play Bloodletting anymore. Oof. That's not good. What I can do is Dark Shackles this turn. We're gonna forget Bash. Alright, get rid of that since it's unplayable and I can't heal anymore. That would be a, a bad choice, right? Probably want to get rid of Bash too. Just keep getting rid of stuff. We're hoping this is the multi hit, but if it's the big hit, we have it covered. Let's see, shrug. Don't bother with this deep breath. Nice, it was the multi hit. Okay, I think we're good actually. Wow, what a close run. Holy moly. 
actually get there? It's pretty ridiculous. And there's the big hit. Yeah, that could have been in a different order, in which case it would be in much worse shape here. But it wasn't. Easy. You need to be weakened. This I have determined. Toasted. GG, Mr. Hard. What a run. Barely scraping by. I thought this run was dead multiple times over, but here we are at the end, victorious. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.